Well, it is, uh, it is my great privilege to uh, welcome all of you to the 2022 President's Club reception. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Rich Bundy, and I'm the Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations. You know, this reception is always a meaningful occasion for us, but especially so uh, these past two years. I remember last fall's event was the first time that we were able to really gather a group of our donors together, and we were so happy to be able to welcome all of you back to campus uh, after nearly 18 months of no personal visits, no in-person activities. This year's gathering is equally significant, though, and I think uh, we have even more to celebrate thanks to the impact of your annual gifts. As you all know, this past summer we concluded our six-year fundraising campaign, A Greater Penn State for 21st Century Excellence, with the goal to advance the three imperatives of a modern land-grant institution, opening the doors of higher education to even more students, transforming experiences beyond the classroom and impacting the world through leadership in energy, health, and other emerging fields. When the campaign concluded on June 30th, we had crushed our goal. $2.1 billion raised in six years was the goal, and we finished at $2,205,000,000. Just to put that in perspective, that is a million dollars a day, every day, for six years, that's worth applause, yep. <laughs> that's a million dollars a day every day for six years, including the weekends and a leap year. <laughs> now, that's impressive, but what's I think most extraordinary about our campaign is how many members of the Penn State family stepped up to contribute. This is an astonishing number to me. During the Greater Penn State campaign, the university received support from more than 697,000 donors. Now, just to put that in perspective, that is six record Beaver Stadium crowds. <laughs> Additionally, we had more than 700 volunteers dedicate their time, their talent, and their treasure toward the campaign's success. And among that number were members of our campaign executive committee whose vision was central to our success. Now, I'm told that our campaign chair, Rick Sokolov, and his wife, uh, Susan, are here tonight, but I haven't seen them yet. So Rick, if you're here, give a shout. I guess he's not, but uh, uh, regardless, I want to thank Rick for his leadership. I want to thank the other members of the campaign executive committee, some of whom are here, and indeed, I want to thank all 700 of our campaign volunteers for their extraordinary efforts. To reach the finish line of a campaign like ours, we needed support from all of you and you stepped up in big ways. Your generous generosity made all the difference. Over the six years of the campaign, more than 16,500 President's Club members gave a collective $557 million towards our $2.2 billion goal. Last year alone, 6,069 President's Club members gave a collective $119.6 million to areas across the university. This was by far the best fundraising year from President's Club members in the history of the university. Your generosity paved the way to a historic achievement. In the final year of the campaign, Penn State received more than $437 million in commitments from alumni and friends to meet priorities across the institution. This makes last fiscal year the single largest fundraising year in the history of Penn State. Now included in that number was yet another record-breaking Giving Tuesday. More than 8,600 Penn Staters came together to make gifts totaling one and a quarter million dollars to support student groups, campus initiatives, and pressing needs across Penn State. Since we last met last fall, we've also participated in two One Big Week Giving Challenges going head-to-head -head with our Big Ten peers, and I'm happy to report that we went two for two beating the competition on both outings. Earlier this month, we concluded the 2022 challenge with more than $126,000 raised from the gifts of more than 2,100 alumni and friends, all of which will support student food security programs and food pantries at campuses across the Commonwealth. I could share, I could actually go on all night sharing statistics about the success of last year's fundraising efforts, but um, they really tell the same story uh, about what Penn Staters can accomplish when we work together. Your annual gifts over the past year have been a critical part of reaching 
the success of the campaign, the success that we continue to enjoy. And so the overarching message from me tonight is thank you. Thank you very much for your generosity. Now, of course, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't also say, there's more. <laughs> and to that end, I'd like to remind all of you that Giving Tuesday 2022 is just around the corner in November. Following last year's record-setting success, we've got plans to support and promote even more campaigns and raise even more money than we did in 2021. And uh, as you might expect, we'll be looking to you, the members of our President's Club, to lead the way again this year. Now, I know I've thrown a lot of numbers around tonight, and, and they're all big and impressive, but at the same time, I recognize that numbers like this uh, can sometimes be hard to wrap your mind around. So later this evening, we're going to share a story about how one donor's support during the campaign has made a direct and lasting impact on a specific student. But until then, let me say thank you once more for your support and for all you do to make us proud to be Penn Staters. Now, as our program continues, I'd like to introduce our first musical performance of the evening. The Statesmen are Penn State's premier all-male a cappella group. Yep. Here they come. I'm told that you can listen to their music at any time via YouTube or Spotify, but we have them live tonight. Please join me in welcoming the Statesmen. so excited to be back here. I've been at the Penn Stater now every single semester since I've been in the group, and it is genuinely one of our favorite performances to do. Um, up here tonight, we have three new members. They're not just forgetful. This is their first performance. They're the ones without the ties and cardigans. This is the first performance they've ever done with us. So, yes, a real trial by fire. We're, we're great to have them here with us. Um, and uh, first thing we're going to sing for you is Signed, Sealed, Delivered. All right. 
Oh my gosh. Uh, as uh, Noah, our president, said, we're so happy to be here. We love uh, coming and singing for all of you and for you, President Bendapudi. <laughs> um, yeah, this is my last semester in the Statesman, so I'm just so grateful to be here uh, one final time. So yeah, uh, next we're going to be singing uh, one of our favorites. I think you'll like it too. Uh, it's called Jesse's Girl. Jesse is a friend. Yeah, you know he's been a good friend of mine. But lately something's changed. It ain't hard to define. Jesse's got himself a girl, and I wanna make her mine. Cause she's watching him with those eyes, and she's loving him with that body. I just know it. And he's holding her in his arms late, late at night. You know I wish that I had Jesse's girl. I wish that I had Jesse's girl Where can I find a woman like that? I play along with the charades It doesn't need to be a reason to change You know I feel so dirty when they start talking cute I want to tell her that I love her but the point is probably moved Cause she's watching him with those eyes And she's loving him with that body, I just know it And he's holding her in his arms late, late at night You know I wish that I had Jesse's girl I wish that I had Jesse's girl Where can I find a woman like that, like Jesse's girl I wish that I had Jesse's girl where can I find a woman? Where can I find a woman like that? And I look in the mirror all the time, wondering what she don't see in me. I've been funny, I've been cool with the lines. Ain't that the way love's supposed to be? My best friend's girlfriend My best friend's girlfriend My best friend's girlfriend Tell me, where can I find a woman like that? Where can I find She's my best friend's girl. She's my best friend's girlfriend. She's Jesse's girl. Yeah, she's Jesse's girl. You know, I wish it I had Jesse's girl. I wish it I had Jesse's girl. What can I find? I want to want Jesse's girl Where can I find a woman like that, like Jesse's girl? All right, once again, we just can't express how grateful we are to have the opportunity to perform for you guys. It's been great. We always have a great time when we come here and we're, when we're invited. Everyone's so nice, so again, thank you so much. It's a great opportunity. We have one more song for you, um, and it's a Penn State classic with a Statesman twist. Hope you enjoy. Every college has a legend Passed on from year to year To which they pledge allegiance And always cherish dear But of all the honored idols There's but one that stands the test it's the stately ninny lion, the symbol of our bed. Come on, man. You want to be invited back next year? Sorry, guys. Two, three, four. Hail to the lion. 
and true. Hail, alma mater, with your white and blue. Best stay forever. Indiana has its Hoosier, Purdue its golden glass. The Wildcats of Northwestern and Spartans on attack. Ohio State has its Buckeyes up north, the Wolverines. But the mighty little Lions, the best they've ever seen. Hail to the Lions. Now every college has legend, they pass off from year to year. Every college has legend, they pass off from year to year. And they're gonna pledge allegiance and they'll always cherish dear. And they're gonna pledge allegiance and they'll always cherish dear. In mud of all the other idols that before the stance test, it's the Stanley Ninny Lion. It's the symbol of our fest. Tell him, Noah. And I said, hell. I said, hell. The Lion! Okay, everybody be honest, how many of you are singing along for that last one, right? That's the terrific job, guys. Thanks again. So it's now my honor to introduce to you the chair of the Board of Trustees, Matt Schuyler. Matt was elected to the board in July 2015 and stepped into his current role as chair in 2020. Of course, Matt's leadership on the board is only one example of his dedication to his alma mater, Matt's Penn State Volunteer Service has included membership on the Board of Visitors in the Smeal College of Business, the College of IST, and the School of Hospitality Management Advisory Board. And the Alumni Association honored Matt with an Alumni Fellow Award in 2013. Tonight, Matt also joins us as a fellow philanthropist. Together with his wife, Anne, Matt has endowed the Schuyler Family Lion Ambassador Program Endowment, and they have supported Thon, Penn State Intercollegiate Athletics, the Smeal College of Business, and many other uh, parts of the campus. So please join me in welcoming the Chair of the Board of Trustees, Matt Schuyler. Matt. Thank you, Rich, and good evening, everybody. Okay, just a second here. Note to self, do not follow the statesman with your speech. So next year, Rich, I'd like the earlier slot, please. Uh, that was phenomenal. And I think the three new participants earned their blue sweaters tonight. So again, <laughs> congratulations. So, Rich, thank you. And, and thanks to everyone here tonight for this glorious weekend. Football weather is upon us. We welcome those of you who are from out of town to Happy Valley for this weekend's festivities. And I want to say welcome to this evening's festivities and thank you on behalf of our entire university community. As we've already heard, the President's Club members have played a key role in the achievements we've celebrated together and most importantly, in our students' future ambitions. You know, it's this dedication and passion of a community like this that inspires me and my family to commit our time, my time, to philanthropy and to Penn State in general. Serving uh, on the Board of Trustees for six years now, I've had the honor most recently to be Chair of the Board of Trustees and I don't take this responsibility lightly. The volunteerism that we exhibit as trustees is from the heart. We love Penn State, and I know I speak for many in this room 
when I say this community, this Penn State community has shaped my life and I'm grateful for every chance that I get to pay it forward for future generations of Penn Staters. It's also my honor this evening to introduce someone who I think needs no introduction. It's my, inter it's my honor to introduce Dr. Neely Bendapudi to the stage for her first President's Club reception. Neely, once you get to know her, you will realize, is a values-driven leader with a reputation for integrity and inclusion, is already building upon the university's esteemed legacy to make us stronger and more impactful together as a university community. For those of you who are just meeting her for the first time this evening, I know you'll be impressed as we have been as a board welcoming her to the university and welcoming her to the broad community of Penn Staters, not just here in Happy Valley, but around the world. She's dynamic, she's accessible, she's a savvy business and financial manager, and I will say most noteworthy, she's invested and in a huge advocate in student success. She leads with students first in everything she does. She truly embodies the commitment of Penn State's land-grant mission. So with that, and on behalf of my colleagues here this evening from the Board of Trustees, I am pleased on their behalf uh, to welcome to the stage the 19th president of the Pennsylvania State University, Dr. Neely Bendapudi. Good evening, everybody. So I can see it's just like church. Everybody came early and kind of sat towards the back. But it's so good to see you. It is such a pleasure to see you. And I have goosebumps today just thinking about the fact that this is my first time being with all of you. This is the President's Club. And I am the president after all. I love it. Uh, I, I want to recognize, uh, first of all, many members of our board that are here today. I'm going to tell a story about uh, my, one of the, my bosses, the chair, uh, Matt Schuyler, when we talk about the dedication that our members of our board bring to this. I, I'm sorry, Matt, I'm not looking at you. Is He flew back from Singapore, landed at, on Thursday morning, and then drove here. It was like an 18-hour flight, gets to D.C., I'm assuming, and then drives down here for meetings. And that really tells me how much Penn State means to all of you. So many members of our board of trustees, would you mind standing up? Because I sometimes forget who is here. Please, please thank each and every one of them. To a person, these are individuals like you who are saying, Penn State made a difference in my life, and so I want to make a difference in someone else's life. I keep my remarks short today. I will tell you that this is month five on the job, so I have all the answers. So please, have them come, I, I'm ready. Uh, but it's been a joy. My husband of 38 years, Dr. Venkat Bendapudi is here. And we seriously talked about it yesterday. We said, we've been so fortunate. Everywhere we've been, we've truly loved. It is not that we were uh, not welcome or uh, people weren't wonderful where we were. We truly have been blessed that way. But there is genuinely something special about Penn State. And not just that my name means blue. So maybe I feel at home here. That, no, it truly does. Neely means blue. But truly, there's something about people who have gone to Penn State, and people who are going to Penn State now, and people who have Penn State roots. They are welcoming, warm, no pretensions. There's something incredibly attractive about being part of the Penn State family. Why should I be surprised? After all, the wisdom of Penn State isn't saying we are. It's not I am. I find that profound. I really do. Think of the wisdom of saying we are only as happy, only as strong, only as resilient as the teams, as the families, as the communities we are born into, that we build, that we nurture. 
I think there's wisdom in that. So I, no doubt, I feel incredibly part of the family. So big picture, I want to tell you that I've gone to all but one Commonwealth campus. Because when we talk about Penn State, it's not just here. It's the reality that 96% of Pennsylvanians live within 30 miles of one of our locations. And even for my President's Club members, I don't know how many of you know that now you can get a four-year degree at every single one of those campuses. That is unbelievable. And there's genuinely no university like Penn State in the country. And I say this to you in all sincerity. And I know no university president would get up and say, oh, our university is mediocre, or we are OK. Everyone will say we are a great university. But this is genuinely backed by facts. There's no university like ours that says one university that can cover the entire Commonwealth and have that kind of impact. There are systems, but there's not one university like us. My priorities, 100%, it is student success. I think that individuals, organizations, businesses, they lose their way when they forget what they're supposed to be. When they lose sight of the mission, we are here for one reason, and that is the success of our students. So for all of you, thank you for your philanthropy. I want to make it easy. What am I going to focus on for all of our students? I'm calling it the A, B, C of student success. See, I can't make it easier than that. A, B, C. A, academic preparedness for every single student. We can't just bring them. We need to make sure when they're here that they graduate, that they are successful. That's going to be important. And not just that they've graduated. Let's be honest, when you send your children or your grandchildren or your nephews or nieces to college, you certainly hope that college education elevates their thinking, their mind, I get it. But you also hope they can think those lofty thoughts in their own homes and not your basements. Is that right? So we all want that. So academic preparedness is are we preparing them to be successful for meaningful jobs and careers in whatever they want to do? B, creating a sense of belonging. I love that about Penn State. You can come to a large university and you can make it feel small. Did you not sense the brotherhood? of the a cappella group right here, the statesmen, they were able to come to a large university and find the young people today call it their tribe, their posse, their people, whatever you call it. They were able to find their group, their version of we are. We need to make that possible for every single student. We have so many students for whom they are first generation college students, the first in their families to get a college degree. We have so many students who are dealing with financial challenges coming here. My version of belonging is it doesn't matter who you are. If you're ready to don your blue and white and you are ready to say we are, we love you, we welcome you, your family. Isn't that the beauty of family? It's a place where they always have to let you in, isn't it? So that is it. We are family. We're going to hang, you know, hang in there for one another. C is cost. And I thank you for your philanthropy. And I want you to keep it coming. Rich Bundy and I both make that plea to you. Because costs, containing those costs, making it possible to transform lives through higher education is what we are all about. I had the privilege of speaking to a group of alumni and I told them this. So I hope you don't mind if you've heard me say this again, to remember, I know tonight we'll sing the alma mater. I want you to know and remember what the words alma mater even mean, why you are here today. Alma mater means the nourishing mother, the nurturing mother. Each of you, because you are here, I know you or someone in your life has been nurtured and nourished by this incredible dear old state, the mother to whom you say, you have nourished me. That is a debt we will never be able to repay. All we can do is pay it forward. So I hope, I mean it, this will be my first year, and I am super competitive, aren't I, Rich? Every time he says we did well last year, it's like, oh my gosh, don't let it fail on my watch. We better do bigger this year. So truly, 
thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for everything you've done, your time, talent, treasure, whatever you give. All we can do is promise you we will be excellent stewards. We will be great stewards. And we will never forget that we are here for our students. And a quick shout out to our researchers, to our faculty and staff. You might say, why does that make a difference? The research they are doing and bringing into the classroom gives our students an edge. It means they are learning things that will not appear in textbooks for a few years. It gives them that advantage of relevance. So I am just so thrilled to be here with you. And when it's done, I'm going to try my best, come and see each and every one of you. And thank you for inviting me into your family. I told you to be prepared. Four generations of my family are here, and more people are coming. I'm telling everybody this is the place to be. Thank you so very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And now, oh, thank you. And now I have the great honor. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so thrilled you will have another musical interlude. When I look at Penn State, there are points of excellence everywhere. Be prepared to be amazed. I know you've all heard them before. We have the seniors from our musical theater program. And believe it or not, we're always in the top three in musical theater, but talk about competitiveness. They get about 1,500 applications, apparently, for about 12 to 14 spots a year. And John Simpkins, the director, the head of musical theater, I'm sure, has some amazing things planned. The only bad thing about John is he's quickly replaced all of us in our daughter's eyes as the coolest person in uh, State College. Well, I shouldn't complain if her husband is, you know, letting her say, John is uh, the coolest person. But seriously, uh, I'm excited for you. Are they ready, Rich? Oh my gosh, come on up. This is already my fifth time hearing them perform in five months, so. What? Oh, you want me to stay here? Oh, I'm like, I, was, I would do any. can free her whenever it starts and it's magic if the music can move you and hold you so tight that it never will lose you your feet start tapping and you can't seem to, to find if it's really real or just a state of mind do you believe in magic just close those big eyes and think of the wonderful thoughts that arise and baby if you dream it just right over the moon top tonight and you'll be flying and from there you can see how the magic's in you and the magic's in me do you believe in magic come along with me we'll dance until morning till it's just you and me and baby if the music is right i'll be here tomorrow so Night. And you'll we'll go, go dancing, baby, and you'll see how the magic's in the music and the music's in me. Believe in the magic of a young girl's soul. Believe in the magic of rock and roll. Believe in the magic that can set you free. Oh.
leaves on the trees will be falling to the sound of the breezes that blow. And I'm trying to please to the calling of your heartstrings that play soft and low. And all the night's magic seems to whisper and hush. And all the sound moonlight seems to shine in your blush. Ooh. 
Weren't they amazing? What did you think? It was, it was amazing. I agree. And I have to tell you, uh, it's a great reminder that everything we do, the little ones are watching, aren't they? They're learning, they're watching, and what we do echoes so loudly, they do not hear what we say. It's what we do by example. So today I wanted to introduce a very special donor to you, but I want you to hear her name from the little one that's watching, right? So who's going to be our speaker today, Alex? Laura Block. Who is Laura Block? She's my mom. All right, and who else is here? What's your sister's name? Nora. And what about your dad? Andrew. And are we so proud of your mom? Yeah. All right. So let's invite up here Nora and Alex's mom, Laura Brock. Block, sorry. <laughs> See, you did it right. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak with you this evening. As my daughter told you, my name is Laura Kleinstein Block, and I am a 1998 graduate from the College of the Liberal Arts with a degree in history with minors in Spanish and women's studies. Um, I want to thank my family for being here this evening, my husband Andrew, who as a graduate of Vanderbilt University is still reeling from us hiring away coach James Franklin. <laughs> Um, my daughters, Nora and Alex, who you were introduced to, and my mom, Jackie, who is watching us virtually. The beginning of my Penn State story is probably a familiar one. My parents met here at University Park in the fall of 1961, both as freshmen. My mother, Jackie, was called back to her home in Philadelphia and finished her degree at Temple, while my father, Jonah, graduated in the spring of 1965 with his degree in history as well. I was raised on Penn State football and had my first taste of a national championship at age six when my father took our family down to New Orleans to attend the 1983 Sugar Bowl. I wish I could say that I remember that glorious win over the Georgia Bulldogs. However, I really just remember sporting a giant pin on my shirt that said Herschel who and taunting the Georgia fans over it. <laughs> During my childhood, my father would volunteer his time in the evenings at local high schools representing Penn State at college night. For those of you who don't know what that is, high schools would open up their gyms to students and parents in that community, and colleges from all over would send representatives to come speak about the school and their experiences there. In the fall of 1993, at the start of my senior year of high school, I was a bit lost on where to apply to college myself. It had been some time since we had been up to State College, and by luck, my father received a letter in the mail from his fraternity inviting him to a wine and cheese reception the same weekend as Penn State's 1,000th football game and our first matchup against Michigan. My father, who had kept in touch with Dean Susan Welsh of Liberal Arts, rang her up and asked her to meet with us on that Friday morning. We drove up toward campus, met with Dean Welsh, and attended his fraternity homecoming that evening. I was sold. I knew from that moment on I was going to be a Penn Stater. It wasn't even a question in my mind on where else to apply. I'm sad to say, and for those of you who remember, we lost to Michigan the next day, 21 to 13. However, that did not sway my decision to want to attend this fabulous university. When I received my acceptance letter in the mail, my father nicknamed me his Little Lion, and it stuck through my graduation. My four years at Penn State were incredible. I can't say enough about my experience here. I rushed and joined a sorority where I held different leadership positions. I got involved with the College Democrats and volunteered my time on the 1996 presidential campaign. I also played club ice hockey before there was a varsity and women's team. Being at University Park and in State College was a joyous time for me and a special four years that I will always cherish. While it seems as if Penn State football and their storied history was a huge catalyst for my wanting to come here, I swear there were a million other reasons, all of which lived up to their promise. My Penn State education opened doors and enabled me 
to lead the most interesting career path that one could have chosen. I started my career working in politics as a White House intern, and for the next seven years after that, working on various Democratic campaigns across New York State. From there, I decided to test out the waters in the private sector, working the next eight years at Condé Nast Publications, including The New Yorker, Wired, and Lucky Magazines. Until now, snaking my way to Audible and Amazon. Maintaining a connection to Penn State has always been a priority of mine, whether it be through friendships, work connections, attending sporting events, and even traveling with university on an alumni ski trip to Big Sky, Montana. I've been so fortunate throughout my career to have had wonderful mentors and guidance, and when approached by Mark Krawick to set up a scholarship with the university, my first instinct was yes, 100%. Now is my time to give back, not only financially, but to help guide a student through the ins and outs of their college time here, and from there, hoping to build a lasting relationship with said student to help guide them through their eventual career journey. Sure, it's easy to write a check, but the mentor-mentee relationship is really what fulfills my ever-loving Penn State soul. What better way to do that than naming this after my father, who passed away in 1999 and would have loved the initiative and been so proud of me to follow in his footsteps. Thank you again for listening to my Penn State story, which doesn't stop here. It will hopefully continue on through my children, their children, and so forth. I will forever say we are with immense pride. With that, I'll turn things over to Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations at Penn State, Rich Bundy. Thank you, Laura. I, I remember that button, but, but the other button I remember that some of you might remember, the Mellon Bank button from the bowl game that said, Herschel is a walker, but Warner is a runner. Yeah. Remember that one? Well, we have, uh, as promised, one final speaker tonight before we wrap up the celebration. Uh, Talia Walton is the very first recipient of the Jonah A. Kleinstein Memorial Fund, the scholarship Laura established in her father's memory. Talia recorded a message to share with all of us. She's not here tonight, but if we turn to the screens, you can hear what she has to say. Hi, I'm Talia. I am from Maryland, and I chose to come to Penn State because I love how much of a community it is here. Everybody is so friendly and so nice and so inclusive and you can go out and say we are and always get it back. I love the football obviously. It is a great school and it is also great for my major which is psychology. I am loving it here so far and I'm really excited to study here and get to experience life at Penn State and it's already given me so many opportunities. I got into um, into volunteering at a place downtown at a hotline center, and it's just it's great because it's been the first month, and I'm already getting opportunities here, and I'm excited to go somewhere after college and to really just take everything I got here and use that in the future. I am so thankful that I got a scholarship like the Jonah A. Clancy Memorial Fund. It is so helpful. I'm so thankful for it. I cannot believe I got it. This is an amazing thing that I received, and I'm so thankful for Laura Block, who was the benefactor of my scholarship. I'm so thankful for her. Thank you so much for doing this for me, for giving me this opportunity. It's really, I'm very thankful, I'm very appreciative. And I wanna say thank you to everybody who was a donor for these scholarships. You're helping so many people and so many kids here and so many students. And it's an amazing thing that you guys are doing and we're all very appreciative. This is amazing and my journey here so far has been amazing and I'm so thankful for every opportunity that's been given my way. And again, thank you so much, Laura Block, for everything you've done for me. 
And um, yes, thank you. That's all. <laughs> And, and that's what it's all about, right? The, that was a firsthand account of a student whose trajectory in life has been changed forever thanks to the generosity of a donor. So thank you, Laura, uh, for your gift to establish the Jonah Kleinstein Memorial Fund. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that your giving is already having the kind of impact that you hoped it would. And once more, thanks to all of you for your generosity which is creating new opportunities for students like Talia on all 24 of our campuses. Your philanthropy has given our community so much to celebrate and even more to look forward to. So at this time, we're gonna conclude our formal program, but as the president, I think she's learning her way around Penn State, right? Five months in and she already predicted that we would in fact have the alma mater. So could you please join me in welcoming the statesman back to stage for performance of the Penn State alma mater. And by all means, please feel free to sing along.